Colorado has now lost three straight. They lost at Oregon State tonight, 26 to 19. And my biggest takeaway from this game right now, Coach Prime looks awful as a head coach. Now, don't take this out of context. This doesn't mean that I have lost faith in Colorado. I still believe in Coach Prime's ability to build this program up to a championship caliber level. But damn, the coaching looks awful right now. First of all, he decides to go with Pat Shermer instead of his previous offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis. And that decision looked awful okay the offense looked as bad as what it has been all this year the offensive line still can't protect Shadur and you can blame the offensive line all you want to the guys who coach prime has decided to start to protect his son have been awful all season long but at the same time you got to put a good amount of the blame on the coaching as well because they're not helping these guys out these guys are struggling, and instead, they just allow them co to continue to struggle week after week. They're not adding any tight ends to help block. They're not using running backs to help chip block. It's the same shit week after week repeatedly. And you got to wonder, Deion Sanders, when are you going to decide to say enough's enough and try to just add some extra help in there to help these guys out, out front because obviously the offensive line can't hold their own you're going to have to add the tight end in line so he can help pass protect you're going to have to utilize your running backs a lot more and pass protection also and also something that really pisses me off is the fact that Colorado refuses to run the damn football man it's like they don't care about utilizing their running backs at all. Oh, McCaskill, his freshman season at Houston, was averaging five yards per carry and had 16 touchdowns. He barely gets any work, okay? Dylan Edwards was getting utilized a lot the first three games of the season. We barely hear his name called now unless it comes to him going out and catching passes. The running backs need to get more touches. A large reason why Colorado can't perform at peak efficiency on offense is because they don't play complimentary football. It's easy for pass rushers to tee off on you when they know that you're going to throw the ball every freaking play. In the first half, they only ran the ball seven times. It really amazes me how Colorado continues to, week after week, do the same shit that doesn't work and produce the same results. And he really thought that going from Sean Lewis to Pat Shermer was going to make anything better. For those of you guys who watch the NFL, you guys know the story about Pat Shermer. He hasn't been a good play caller in years. His last time calling plays, he got fired when he was the head coach of the New York Giants. He was brought in to be Colorado's offensive analyst. I never thought that he was ever going to touch the play calling during this season. Sean Lewis isn't that bad. I think it's pretty simple. All you got to do is tell Sean Lewis to run the freaking football more. Utilize tight ends more to help block. Utilize your running backs to help block. Hell, you aren't going to use your running backs to run the football, so you might as well try to use them for something. You see, if you don't want to give Deion Sanders proper criticism, then at this point, you're being overly too biased towards Deion Sanders. And I love Deion Sanders, and I still believe in what he's building in Colorado. But right now... His coaching has looked abysmal, all right? You can't go in to these games doing the same shit that isn't producing different results. That's the sign that you're not a great coach. And at this moment, Deion Sanders looks awful as a head coach because it looks like he puts those sunglasses on and he's just blind to the issues that this team has and they don't really do much adjustments. Literally, you can hear the announcer saying that Colorado doesn't look any different from what they looked last week when they lost to UCLA. 
Yeah, Shadur Sanders didn't get sacked seven times, but the performance didn't look any better. Oregon State was getting pressure on Shadur all night long. He damn near had to leave the game, and I thought that he was done. And then he found the way to come back and will Colorado to two more touchdown drives. I find it really amazing that Shadur Sanders is Deion Sanders' son, and yet Deion Sanders doesn't try to make more improvements to making sure that he can stay protected and have a long football career. At this point, Shadur is going to need to be applying for disability benefits with the amount of hits he's been taking back there. All season long, hit after hit. It's like anytime you play Colorado, it's an all-you-can-sack buffet on Shadur Sanders. Eventually, when is Coach Prime going to say enough is enough and change the scheme up? And don't give me the whole, oh, it's too late into the season to start trying to change your scheme. You got to do something because the offense has not been the same that we saw earlier this season when they went to TCU and they were putting 40 burgers on nearly every team that they played. This offense has struggled and it's been because this offensive line has played garbage. Yes, the offensive linemen that Deion Sanders has are not that good, but the coaching is not helping. They're leaving these dudes out to dry. Deion Sanders, I love him, but when it comes to this offensive line, getting guys in the transfer portal isn't going to help that much if you're not going to be able to coach these guys up and help them improve. And another thing that really annoys me Anytime I watch Colorado, it's the awful clock management. Why would they wait until the last two, one seconds of the game to finally call another timeout? If you're going to use your timeouts, use them earlier. The clock management has been awful in every single game that I've watched Colorado play in this year. And if you want to say, oh, JT, you're turning on Coach Prime, if me giving Coach Prime some constructive criticism is me turning on him, then I don't know what to say. You just want me to sit up here and continue to praise somebody who continues to make terrible coaching decisions every single week. It's the same thing. Shadur Sanders is running for his life back there. The offensive line is getting no help from the running backs or tight ends, and the clock management is terrible. You're just naive if you think that Deion Sanders is doing nothing wrong and you just have an insane obsession with loving on Deion. Look, we all love Deion. We want this program to succeed. We want to see Deion Sanders lead Colorado to a national championship. But in order for that to happen, there needs to be more accountability with the situation. All right. It's cool to go out to the national media and your post-game press conference and say, yeah, we need to get more new linemen. Okay, cool. But what's the point of getting more offensive linemen if your coaching isn't going to be good enough for those guys to succeed? And I'm really interested in seeing after this season how many players stay and how many players hit that transfer portal? Because if half of this team leads for the transfer portal, I think it's going to say a lot about Deion Sanders. You see, a big reason why I was a big believer in Deion Sanders is because I felt like he was going to knock the recruiting out of the park. And they had a lot of five and four star guys in attendance in this game. And if I'm a five or four star offensive lineman, why would I want to play for Colorado? Yeah, you can pitch me early playing time, but can you pitch me the fact that I'm going to be properly coached? You're going to put me in the proper scheme to succeed? Because right now, Colorado's offensive coaching is terrible. You don't really know who is your offensive coordinator. The play calling has diminished. You don't run the football at all. The defense has improved, but offensively, Colorado has looked like a shell of themselves compared to how well they played on the offensive end of things their first couple of games this season. They started out 3-0. Ever since their 3-0 start, they lost, what, what, one out of five? They've, they're on a, they're on a three-game losing streak right now, okay? They're one in five since their 3-0 start. Colorado right now is being poorly coached by Deion Sanders. It's like the coaching was really good the first four games. And now the coaching has just went god awful. How do you go from 
great coach, the bad coach, in the span of just a couple of weeks. And like I said, I'm not turning on Deion Sanders. If me being honest about what I'm seeing out there is me turning on Deion Sanders, then once again, I'm going to say that you're being naive. Deion Sanders is part of why Colorado is in the situation that they're in right now. And of course, you can say, well, JT, Deion Sanders already accomplished what was needed to be done because they improved their win total from one to four, and that's cool. But I at least thought that Colorado was capable of being able to win six games. You see, you can make all the excuses about you not being able to make a complete team via the transfer portal. That's understandable. But let's not make it seem like the coaching hasn't been the problem. You have to change coordinators. That didn't work. And you changing coordinators, nothing looked different from the offense. The offense looked as bad as how it has looked over the last couple of weeks. Give Sean Lewis back the play calling duties. I never felt like Sean Lewis play calling was that bad where you need to revoke the play calling duties from him. The only thing you needed to tell Sean Lewis was to run the football more with the running backs and find ways to give Shadur Sanders additional help. And yet they continue to go four and five wide, which gives Shadur Sanders less time to get the football out because then he's going to have to get the football out fast as hell because you're going to have nobody there to help block. It doesn't make sense. Deion Sanders going to the podium, calling out the offensive line, but yet not improving the coaching. Your job as a coach is to coach these young fellas up. Your job as a coach is to make these guys believe in themselves, not shit on them, and then continue to leave them out to dry. Every single time you listen to these commentators call a Colorado game, they say the same thing every week. They need to leave running backs out there to help chip. They need to leave a tight end in line to help assist the offensive line. And they don't do any of it. You see, I'm upset because I want Deion Sanders to lead the buffs to greatness. I really do. I want Deion Sanders to prove all his haters wrong. Because believe it or not, there are a lot of people out here who just devote their life to watching Colorado play and rooting for Deion Sanders to fail. I'm not one of those people. I truly and genuinely want to see Colorado win it all with Deion Sanders being at the helm at head coach. But you're not going to be a championship program if you're coaching continues to be this bad. You continue to not make adjustments. This isn't a program that I feel has a bright future. If I keep seeing the same shit that I've seen out of Coach Prominence coaching staff the last three weeks, at the end of the day, your job as a coach is to put players in positions to succeed. And if you are a Colorado fan, can you honestly say that Deion Sanders has done a great job of that over the last couple of weeks? We get that they're outmatched up front. We get that. We know that they don't have a lot of talent on the defensive line and the offensive line. But the defensive line is playing better. The offensive line seems to continue to get worse and worse every single week. And you can only be so bad. You keep saying things can't get any worse. Yes, they can. They get worse every single game they play. Oregon State, yes, this game looked close. But if you really watch this game from start to finish, Oregon State had control of this ball game for the whole entire 60 minutes this game was played. There never was a moment in this game where I felt, oh, yeah, like Colorado has a chance to win this thing. Shadur Sanders is the sole reason why Colorado has four wins and why they don't have any. If it wasn't for Shadur Sanders, Colorado would be an awful football team. He really is the glue that keeps this team together. And I have a lot of respect for Shadur to continue to go out there and take that punishment behind that garbage offensive line and still be able to keep his composure and not throw anybody out to the wolves. Got a lot of respect for that. But Deion Sanders, on the other hand, man, something has to change. Every time I watch Colorado, I get really upset because I don't see any adjustments being made. I still believe in Deion Sanders as a head coach, but right now, I can't continue to defend awful coaching. 
And that's what I'm seeing out of Coach Prime and the Buffs right now. This is a coaching staff that continues to do the same thing every single game and then not work. Eventually, you're going to have to make some schematic changes. I don't know what that may entail, but it definitely doesn't involve having Pat Shermer call the damn plays. Hell, I thought Pat Shermer calling the plays, I thought he at least would run the football more. Can't even do that. Oregon State gives Colorado their third straight loss. Colorado has now fallen to below 500. And their next two games are pretty winnable. They got to play Arizona State and Washington State. These are two teams that, you know, they are more talented than Colorado, but I don't think by all that much. And Arizona is playing some really good football right now, okay? But I still think that's a winnable game for Colorado. Same thing for Washington State. We're just going to hope and pray to the football gods that they can figure things out against Utah. But I'm really disappointed in the coaching display and effort that I've seen out of Deion Sanders. It doesn't even look like they're trying to make any changes. They go out there, they do the same nonsense every single week, and Shadur gets blasted. Week after week, he's taking big hits. And if you're Deion Sanders, you got to be concerned as a father. As a father, you should want your offensive line to play better. You should want your running backs to block more and pass protection. You should want to leave a tight end in there to help assist this struggling offensive line. They're not doing anything to help solve their issues. Instead, they just want to go to the podium and make excuses about how we need better offensive linemen. How about we worry about this season, trying to make it to a bowl game, before we start saying how we need to go to the transfer portal and get more players? That's not a good sign to recruits. It is not a good sign to players that are thinking about transferring to Colorado. I mean, they had a five-star offensive tackle there. And after the shit show that Colorado's offensive line put on display tonight, do you think he would want to commit to Coach Prime? I don't even think Colorado is top 50 in recruiting. I thought that... Recruiting would be jumping for Colorado. I thought that Deion Sanders would have an easy time building up this team through recruiting because he's Deion Sanders. He's one of the more recognizable athletes of all time. When Deion Sanders comes to your grandma's living room, everybody knows who he is. But yet, why aren't recruits flocking to the bit to play for Deion Sanders? There's a reason. There's a good reason for it. I'm not saying that Dion is a terrible coach, but based on what I've seen out of this team the last month, he's been having some awful, awful decision-making as the head coach in Colorado. The decision to make Pat Sherman the offensive coordinator was terrible. Give Sean Lewis back the play-calling duties. All you had to tell Sean Lewis to do was to run the football more Let's try to play a more complimentary style of football instead of trying to be old school Mike Leach air raid when we throw the football 50 times a game because you obviously don't have an offensive line that can allow Shadur Sanders to throw the football that much because he's getting pressured on half of his dropbacks. Congratulations to Oregon State on the well-deserved victory. If you're an Oregon State fan, I apologize because this is more about Colorado. All right, you was expected to win this game. You were expected to win by 13 points, double digits. You didn't cover. Colorado covered once again. Colorado is easy money, but this isn't about Colorado being able to cover. This is about Colorado being able to be a properly coached football team. Stop giving me the excuses about how they have limitations. We get that. But things can be a lot better than what we're seeing right now. And if you can agree with that, then you're just a little bit too biased and you're just too much on the Deion Sanders hype train. If you can't give this man proper criticism where he deserves to be criticized, then you're part of the issue. I love Deion Sanders and I want him to succeed. But right now, the coaching that I've seen out of him the last couple of weeks has been abysmal.